Hi everyone. Okay, so yeah, just because I'm just fasting doesn't mean that my husband doesn't eat, right? So I am going to show you one of my husband's favorite, favorite dishes. My daughter, <laughs> poor, <laughs> poor Erica, she says, if you're cooking, shut the door because she's downstairs doing her work. And... I'm gonna start preparing my husband's food. So we're gonna start off with four beautiful yellow peppers. These are all washed, all I have to do is cut them. And I'm gonna put them in my cast iron pan. Now I had cooked potatoes for him last night, so I didn't clean anything because this is perfect. When you have a cast iron, the more that's in there, the better it is. I do keep my cast iron in the oven so it doesn't hang and collect dust anywhere. You don't want to start getting dust inside your cast iron pan, especially if it's got a little bit of oil and stuff like that. So I am going to very easily add more oil for him. And I'm going to start adding just a couple ingredients. Very, very easy recipe. It is peppers. And I've got my, I've got my paper down so this way I can just throw all my scraps and then wrap it up and it goes into compost. So basically it's going to be peppers. Um, onion and some shiitake mushrooms. There we go. Put this aside for now. And while, <coughs> sorry, <clears throat> and while we're doing this, we'll just talk a little, I guess. So, people are probably wondering, why do I do so many juice fasts? Well, why do I do juice fasts? I usually do one every six months. I'm trying to push this aside so you can actually see what I'm doing. Put the mushrooms on that side. And I can't wait to go mushroom picking. Oh my God, I am at the edge of my seat. I can't wait. I do not get rid of the, the butt. If I see the butt's a little ugly, I just knock that over and I cut the whole thing. You could even just pull this off, cut this in half. Remember, these are the ones that we smashed down to make the gluten-free meat. But you could also add this to seitan if you want to. But for now, we're just going to add them like this. And we're just going to cut these up. And anyhow, so why do I... Why do I do so many juice fasts? I, like I said, I usually do um, every, every six months. I try and do at least a small one. I did do one very large one. And I did it... Um, because of my Ramsey Hunt syndrome that I got uh, years back. But I'm not sure if anybody really knows. Uh, JJ, JJ, can you be a good boy for mommy? Uh, if anybody knows about Ramsey Hunt, unfortunately, if there's a little bit of stress in your life, it tends to reactivate it a bit and then you still get that funny feeling you get on your face. The first time it wasn't just a feeling. My whole face kind of went to hell. Um, it went to hell and then it finally came back. And it was all thanks to the juice fast that I did. It really made a difference because the doctor was telling me that unfortunately uh, mine was so severe that there was no way it was going to come back. Um, but with the juice fast, I was able. And if anybody wants to check, I do have some videos up on that. Uh, so, why do I still continue doing it? Well, number one, um, we drive cars every day. Just the fumes alone that we breathe. Um, our foods, if it's not organic, uh, you know, and it's not washed properly, you might have pesticides. So, there's a lot of reasons why it's important that we do do a juice fast. And um, it just helps your body. It not only... Um, not only the environmental issue or part of it, but also um, what I would say is, you know, who's not going to crave things that are not always the healthiest for us, right? Uh, these, by the way, I do not cut them thin. I cut them nice and thick because these are going to go very high heat in the oven and I don't want them too thin because then they're going to break apart on me. So the chunkier the pepper, and that's a bonus, uh, the chunkier the pepper, the nicer it is when you cook it. Who doesn't crave foods that are not always the healthiest for us? I know that we're all human, and 
I normally eat very much raw. That's why when I first started this channel, I called it Rossum Kitchen because that's what I wanted to do was show everybody my raw cooking. But someone, uh, not someone, a few people said to me, Connie, why don't you show us, you know, not everybody wants to be raw. Why don't you show us how you cook for your family? And then I started to show people how I make my seitans and stuff like that. And then it was basically too late to really change the name of my um, my YouTube channel because I also pay for a website or a blog. And to start changing all of that, I figured, you know, I even asked some of you, what do you think? Should I maybe change the name or leave the name? And everybody says, Connie, just leave it. It's great the way it is. So that's what I've done. I basically left the name as Connie's Rossum Kitchen. And the way I see it is Connie with some raw <laughs> recipes. That's how I see it now. Connie with some raw recipes. But I'm okay with it. I don't care. A lot of people are saying, well, you're not going to get viewers that do eat raw come to you. Well, my channel is there for anybody who wants to check it out. I, I'm going to have both because once this detox happens, I'm going back and see if I not see if I can eat the healthiest raw dishes all over again without having that ice cream and without having the cookies. God, those cookies. Yes, those cookies are so good that maybe I ate way too much. These also, don't cut them too thin. Cut them a little chunky and just throw them in. Um, so yeah, that's... You know, my intention is to go back on the right track because, you know, we're human and when we see something good, we're going to eat it. Especially for me, because I ate mostly raw, when I would eat something that wasn't raw, it actually affected my stomach, which was kind of weird because I, my mother used to tell me, you have an, an iron stomach because I was able to eat anything. There was nothing I wouldn't eat. Trust me. I ate all kinds of food and I loved all kinds of food where... I mean, I hate to talk about it, but I remember as kids, uh, if my mother would make liver, my two sisters would go nuts, and I would just sit there and say, yum, yum, yum. So I basically ate everything. But because we're vegan today, the only liver I'm going to make is going to be a vegan liver, which what I was thinking about doing. And hopefully that could also go on my list of some recipes I make. Um... So there you go. I'm just going to show you what I put in here for now. I'm not going to put any more mushrooms because this really is just for my husband. Eric and I are juicing. Uh, so I've got one pepper and some mushrooms left, which I'll put back in the fridge. But basically, it's just a little bit of peppers. I put only three for now. I did put some mushrooms. Here they are. They're all cut up. And some onions. I'm just going to clean this off of here. Hold on. Okay. There we go. That goes in compost. And I'm going to show you what I have. There we go. So, uh, we've got a little bit of shiitake mushrooms. If you don't have shiitake, you can use portobello. You can use oyster mushroom. That's really up to you. I'm using shiitake because this is what I have. And they were getting a little soft, as you can tell. Uh, these are usually firm and plump. But they were getting a little soft, so I said I might as well use them. <clears throat> use them up. And so my husband's getting them because I can't eat them right now. We are on a juice fast. My daughter Erica is doing 15 days and I am going for 30. Uh, hopefully, maybe even longer, but I'm not going to promise anybody if I'm going to go longer than that. And um, so I need to consume these mushrooms. So he's going to be eating mushrooms today and maybe mushrooms again tomorrow. Because I have lots of mushrooms in my, in my fridge. So very simple. Peppers, onions, and mushrooms. I'm going to put Montreal steak spice on it. And when you put this on your food, it really gives you that flavor of uh, that barbecue, you barbecuing. You know, people that used to barbecue and they had this 
the steak smell. If you've never had Montreal Steak Spice, I do have a recipe on how I make mine, but you could also um, you could also buy it. This is what it looks like. It's um, La Grill and it's Montreal Steak Spice and it is just divine. But yes, if you want, if you can't find it anywhere and you want to try the one I make, I'll put a link maybe at the end of the video and you could go and try and make it yourself. Just as good. Mine is very close to this one. Very good. So here we go. Now, I am not going to put salt on this because my husband's going to check himself for salt. But I am going to leave this in the fridge. Uh, not in the fridge. In my oven. But first I'm going to cook this uh, till... And I put it on high heat. I have a convection bake. Uh, I use a convection bake. But I put it up really high. So I'm going to put this at 400. Yes, I know it sounds high. 420. And that's convection bake. So that means I am 25 degrees higher if you're using a regular, uh, regular oven. So I'm going 420. And I am going to cook this. But keep checking it. There we go. Uh, so I'm going to keep checking it and I am going to uh, stir it so it doesn't just burn on top because this will get really like charred on the top if you don't watch out and toss it. It won't take long to cook because you still want to leave it a little with a nice little bite. And right at the end, I am going to toss in my chicken uh, meat. I'm going to put some of that in there and that's going to be his dinner. Uh, that with a nice French, what a baguette, French baguette. That's going to be his dinner, which I should text him and tell him to bring home a baguette for himself. Uh, so there we go. Very simple dinner. When I say simple, vegan food is simple, guys. Now, if you don't have any seitan or you can't make seitan, these mushrooms are so hearty, so hearty, that they're almost a replacement of meat. It's almost like you're eating meat. That's how hearty those shiitake mushrooms are. These are the ones I'm talking about. You get these at an Asian market. You get them fresh and you could get them dry. If you get them dry, I say soak them and then cut them up and throw them in, uh, in your uh, first soak them. What I used to do when I don't have the fresh is I soak my dry ones. I put them in a large Tupperware. I soak them and I leave them in the fridge. They're good for like a couple of days even a week in there and consume the mushrooms as I need them and that brought that mushroom water that has been soaking first wash them of course if they're dry right uh, then you can use that water in so many dishes and I'm going to show you how to do that one day but this is almost like me so if you don't have shiitake uh, if you don't have seitan just get yourself some uh, shiitake mushrooms or any kind of mushrooms really because mushrooms have a lot of minerals uh, like meat would right but we're not going to eat the meat and we're going to let those animals just do their own thing peacefully and live their lives right even though most of them are confined in a holocaust right now but we're not going to go there um, but let's leave the animal off our plate we really don't need it you can eat healthy without having to worry am I getting this am I getting that you don't have to worry about anything guys the only thing I'm gonna say to worry about if you live in a place like where I do where the sun's not out every day we're talking Canada we're not talking California where the sun is just blasting you all day long we're talking Canada if you live in Canada I would say you should take some vitamin D D3 to your diet and I'm gonna say also take B12 once in a while, not every day, because your body's going to make B12. A lot of people don't know that. And what people really don't know is that uh, people that eat animal products are, they're more deficient in B12 than vegans are. They should be taking B12 too. And there's a long story behind that, but I'm not going to tell you right now because it's going to get a little dirty and I don't want to go there because I don't want to call anybody out. But uh, B12, everybody should take it. Because if you're eating animal products, those animals don't roam the fields and eat the grass. They're confined 
in mud up to their knees. There's no grass growing where they are, and it's not really mud. I'm not going to tell you what that is, but right up to their knees, those poor animals, and they don't eat green stuff. Those animals basically eat junk. I'm not even going to go there. So you should be taking B12 if you eat animal products. And if you're vegan, I say once in a while, yes, you should take B12 too. So that's the only thing I'm going to tell you that you should do if you become uh, a plant-based eater or if you're a meat eater. This is not just for vegans, guys. This is for vegans and for uh, meat eaters. You should definitely be taking D3 if you're in a place that's not very sunny. And you should uh, take uh, B12 because we all need it. B12 is a bacteria that grows in the ground. It does not grow in a cow because today cows don't eat grass and uh, we're a little more civilized so we're not going to pull weeds out of our garden and start eating the weeds and the soil to get our B12 because my front yard has more B12 than those poor cows do. So anyhow, uh, I don't want to get ugly on this but do take B12 and D if you have to and it doesn't have to be every day either. We eat an array of vegetables. We eat an array of different types of mushrooms that gives us also minerals. So don't be afraid. If you really want to change your ways to become a vegan, or if you don't want to become a vegan for the animals, you want to be a plant-based uh, eater, uh, it's all good because when you're plant-based, you leave the animals alone. Hopefully you don't buy leather shoes and leather jackets. <laughs> but anyhow, so back to my detox. Well, I'm gonna put this in the oven soon. Uh, basically it's to reboot my body and to get some of the junk that I've been eating like cookies and stuff and start maybe showing you how I did eat when I would have a cookie my cookies were raw they were really delicious they were just as good as these other ones but a lot healthier so as and I'm not gonna stop making food that my husband eats or my family eats for the people who don't want to eat raw I'm not gonna just do raw dishes no I'm not gonna do that because I know that my followers I've got the ones that eat raw and the ones that eat uh, regular cooked food so I am gonna probably have more cooked foods than I have raw because this is something that I can't get out of I gotta cook for my husband and I gotta cook for my family well I don't have to cook for him He's really good since we've been doing the, the juice fasting. Like all of yesterday, he took care of himself. He made his own food. So I got to say thank you to him because I was not nice yesterday. <laughs> oh, God. I wanted those cookies so bad. And you know what? Those cookies are sitting right on my table. So, yeah, we're not going to go there. But he was nice enough to make his own food. But you know what? Today I feel fantastic. It's my second day. I feel my detoxing is already gone I feel the energy uh, I am starting to um, feel like better than myself and I am going to show you the recipes I make for him while I'm doing my uh, juicing and show you some of my juices and if you're not doing a juice fast and you are eating you might want to make a couple of these juices and add that to your uh, to your meal because they're really nutritious and they're very good for you. I might put maybe the other pepper if there's leftover he can have lunch but really simple simple dish guys. It's you know who doesn't like peppers and onions right? And what I like about the cast iron is because it's so well seasoned I need very little oil and I uh, put it on very high and it does its thing and I don't have to loaded up with oils and that's another thing that's not always great for us is all the oils I do use oils because my husband loves his oil my husband will sit there and put oil on bread what can I do he's a grown man he's gonna do what he wants to do right I have some onion in the fridge I'm gonna go get it and put it in here And these are those things I told you that I made. Now, I made this with leftover beeswax I had when I used to make candles. And not to waste the beeswax, I did use it. Um, but otherwise, you can make your own with uh, soy wax. Or you could buy them online if you want. And that's a great way to just wrap 
some of your vegetables in and look how nice it keeps it too really so there's more onion so we've got the onions we've got the shiitake I might put a couple of more a couple more you know what I might put all of them so this way I don't have to put them back in the fridge those butts go in too guys don't forget and these mushrooms are to die for I can't even tell you how good these mushrooms are they're like meat not meat in the taste of meat but that nice texture really really good I've got a lot of mushroom plants for you guys I don't know if you like them now these are the butts sometimes I get them are the shiitakes and the butts are even bigger than this and let me tell you they I have a recipe I do besides the one that I put in the gluten-free uh, meat that I'm gonna have to show you guys one day they're just amazing they look like tiny ribs but I'm gonna show you how to do that one day I just have to get my priorities straight because I have so many things on my list and I know my hubby's gonna go nest for dinner tonight he's gonna be happy okay might as well use this all up. See? You can actually just break it apart that way. So, yeah, that's why I'm juicing, guys. I'm juicing so I could reboot my body like Joe Cross says. It's a reboot. It's a way to start new and to put healthier foods in our diet. Uh, maybe leave those ice creams alone. And I'm going to make you some delicious ice creams that I make. And they're so good. When, you, when I tell you that some of them are raw, you're going to say, how is that even possible? So I'm just going to put a little more steak spice on here. Like I said, the salt, since I can't taste anything, I am going to leave it for him. My oven is almost done. They're going to go in the oven. In my cast iron, toss them once in a while. I will put a timer to check it. And I'll put a timer maybe every 15 minutes. Go check to make sure it's just not browning only on top. And then I'm going to give them a good toss. And then I'm going to add my chicken meat for him, which he loves. I just want to get myself organized, but I have a new uh, shredded meat recipe to share with you guys. You're going to love it. And I'll put that up for you guys too. So there it is. My oven is done. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to put up those recipes for the ones who do want to eat uh, uh, seitan. And it's going to be my new shredded meat recipe. You're going to love it. I know we love it. That's what's going in this one. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to come back and show you when I put the meat in here and what this dish looks like. It's really simple and very delicious. You can't get more simple than this. I put maybe uh, two or three tablespoons of olive oil and threw my vegetables in with a little bit of spices, which spices are great. It spices everybody's life up. And uh, yeah, we're going to cook this and then add the meat and then I'm going to come back to you guys. Look at this guys, my counter is clean. Easy way to keep a clean counter. Okay, not sure if you can see it. They are getting nice and cooked on top, so I am going to give these a stir and just continue cooking them down. gotta love the old cast iron. If you don't have one, it's a must, guys. You have to get it. Oh, I put a timer for another 20 minutes, and I am going to come back and check them soon. There I go. I did burn my finger. Mmm. I didn't want to do that, but I did. So, ooh, it feels really funny. Yeah, I sizzled it. Okay, so, um, I just put a little bit of my new meat. Isn't it beautiful? Look at that. And I am going to just put this quickly back into the oven. I'm just going to give it a sauce, and he's going to check it himself for salt. He does want some hot pepper, he said, so I will do that. Okay, so here we go. I buy this at our local Asian market. If I don't have any 
Actually, I have some downstairs. I should have gone and get that. But th my husband loves this one. I'm going to put some of that. This is very hot, so you want to be easy on it. I think this is good for him. And I'm just going to toss that in. And remember, guys, when you have stuff like this, you need to retop it with oil. You need to retop it with oil and push everything back in so you don't start anything nasty because if it's exposed to the air it will get nasty on you so there's another little tip for you guys so I'm just gonna toss this up and I'm gonna put this back in the oven not for long because his dinner is basically done so there we are I am just gonna go put this back in at 375 because it's already cooked you could even lower your oven to 350 because right now we just want to heat that meat up and we're going to put this back in okay. and if you're worried your peppers are going to get too brown I uh, just put a little sheet of aluminum paper on top or some parchment paper, something where it won't be exposed to the uh, heat element. And I'm going to show you, uh, when it's done, I'm going to show you what it's like. And here's my beautiful meat for another dish. By the way, this meat lasts quite a bit in the fridge. So do keep it wrapped nicely, though. And if you make too much, you could also simply... Um, freeze it. You can't go wrong if you freeze your meat and take, you can make little bundles and just take out the bundle you need for uh, for cooking. So when you make a big batch of meat, just divide it in portions, freeze it and then just pull it out the night before or the morning before you start cooking. So I'll see you in a bit. So there you go. How simple was this dish, guys? You have the meat always ready in the fridge for when you need it. A little bit of mushrooms, some beautiful peppers, and there is dinner. So I hope you guys like this recipe, and if you give it a try, let me know. See how simple the ingredients were? Just plain steak spice. That's all you need. A little salt if you want extra, but that's about it. So I hope you like this recipe, and guess what, guys? I'll see you in the next one. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawsome Kitchen. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.